Good morning. Today is Wednesday, March the 22nd. The time right now in Singapore is 11.14 in the morning. And overnight on Wall Street, it was all pretty quiet because the market was basically waiting for tonight's uh, FOMC meeting result. Uh, we all know that the FOMC uh, actually started yesterday and it will end today uh, in Singapore timing at 2 a.m. Singapore time. Uh, technically, it's on Thursday morning. Uh, the FOMC will decide on the rate height amount if and when they decide to actually hike. So this market here uh, has a bit of a, a mixed reaction to what the Federal Reserve may actually do. There are four possibilities here. One, uh, market mostly expected a height of maybe a, a quarter point. Maybe, uh, it means a 25 basis point. Uh, this is in contrast to the beginning of the month where the market was expecting a 50 uh, basis point rate height or 0.5%. Uh, but after the turmoil that we saw over the last couple of weeks, we now uh, the market now has revised their forecast to expecting the Fed to only increase by a quarter point. Now, the other outcome is that the Federal Reserve may actually pause. So what are the odds of that happening? Of course, if the market, uh, if the Federal Reserve actually pause the rate hike, that means to say that there's no rate increase, then the market initial reaction as far as equities are concerned is likely to have a knee-jerk rally. But if you look deeper into the reason behind why the Federal Reserve start uh, decide to pause, then it could signal that the problem that we are facing or we are seeing so far is a lot more serious than meet the eye to the extent the Federal Reserve has to stop the rate tightening. So if you look at it from this angle, if there's going to be any initial reaction to the upside, it is basically to me a selling opportunity. Okay. The other possibility is that the Federal Reserve uh, basically hike 50 basis points. Of course, that will cause the market to come off. Okay. So because the market right now do not believe the Federal Reserve has the luxury to keep on continuing rate hike uh, uh, without taking into account the damage has done to uh, the banking uh, sector. So that possibility is actually not very high. Now, the other not very high possibility is the Federal Reserve actually cut rate. Okay. So that means if the market, uh, uh, if the Federal Reserve actually cut rate, which is has very low probability right now, that will signal that the problem is a lot, a lot more serious than we believe. Okay. That uh, prompted the Federal Reserve to actually reverse uh, the rate tightening uh, 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 policy. So that could be signaling something more serious. So that will cause equity market to sell off big time. So these are the four possible uh, outcome of tonight's FOMC meeting. One is that they hike quarter point. One, they hike 50 basis point. And then third, they pause. And fourth, they cut rates. So all four has possibilities here, but the most likely outcome will be a quarter point hike. Okay, so we will have to see how the market reacts. The market has already gone ahead of itself by actually buying up equities in expectation that the Federal Reserve is going to do a pause. Okay, so let's see what happens. Over in the S&P 500, we can see that, like I said, U.S. equity has been rising uh, of late this week after the uh, the term, uh, the turmoil that we've seen over the last week itself. So the market right now in the S&P 500 is back above 4,000. Uh, highest traded last time was 4,009. And the market right now, if it can continue to edge higher, will probably challenge the uh, March twenty uh, March six high at four thousand seventy eight point five. Okay, so I have a bracket of prices in which I'm actually eyeballing, in which I think selling interest may actually emerge from around here four thousand fifty six to four thousand ninety four. Okay, I've actually placed my order to sell if the market actually reacted to the upside. Okay, over in Nasdaq, I think the market has been the firmest of all the major equity index. The highest traded last night was twelve thousand seven sixty two and a half. Very very close to the year high, um, which was last traded on February the 2nd, 28,881. So uh, there is a possibility market may or may not challenge this high. And then let's see what happened. Uh, the key, I think, will be on NASDAQ because NASDAQ has actually been the most bullish this round. Okay. 
Uh, over in Asia, we can see that the Nikkei, uh, the, ja the Japanese market remain closed for holiday. And uh, we will look into Hong Kong for Hang Seng Index. There has a bit of a, a, of a rebound uh, in reaction to Wall Street firmer closing. But you can see this rebound is very tentative. I think the market has not hit bottom yet. There's a possibility the market may actually slide back to around 17,400 to 18,100 uh, range. Okay, let's watch out for this possibility here. Over in mainland China, the CSI 300, which is a major equity index, is also rebounding right now uh, falling short of its um, my target at uh, 3,864 to 3,920. So we can say there's a bit more room to the downside, but let's see whether this rebound will amount to anything. But so far, I think they are not, uh, uh, they are basically reacting to what's happening uh, overseas. Over in energy market, you can see the crude oil prices continue to rally. Last night, high was $69.72. This is a huge reversal of fortune because last week, you can see that Crude oil actually went down to the year slow at $64.33. And down this rebound here has unfolded in a three wave and it has hit my target more or less. I think the market may be prone to profit taking. If we get a profit taking and price slides back, I would love to buy anywhere between $66.40 to $67. Cent, uh, $67. So this will be my area of opportunity. I think the market, if it can stabilize here, uh, has a chance to actually uh, target seventy three dollars. Okay, let, let's let's see whether this actually pans out. Over in uh, gold market, we can see early morning this time yesterday, uh, gold market was actually at the high for the year uh, at two thousand and nine dollars and eighty four cents. But of course, this did not follow through in London, and definitely did not follow through buying uh, in New York. We can see the prices. Actually, as we can see, these are basically profit taking, and if this profit taking resulted in a price going back to around eight. Uh, one thousand eight hundred and eighty-four dollars to nineteen hundred. I think that will be a good area to pick up gold again because I think the challenge of two thousand and nine will be done in very short notice. Maybe in a couple of weeks time, we can see the, back this price. Okay, so this pullback will be a buying opportunity in my opinion. Now, uh, as the gold prices shot up to the year's high, uh, silver did not have the same fortune. The year high is way, 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 way back here. So we can see silver is lagging behind gold and uh, the highest trader was $22.72. And of course, the pullback is also equally shallow because the attention has been on gold and not so much on silver. And if the silver prices manage to pull back to anywhere between $21.30 to $21.64, I think that would be also a buying opportunity uh, because we can see a cluster of prices just before the market went up to $22.72. Uh, over in the dollar index, we can see dollar continue to paddle backwards uh and uh, because of this confidence right now uh, in the U.S. banking system, the dollar is not necessarily the best currency right now. The best currency right now, uh, as most people reacted to the banking crisis, is the Japanese yen. So we can see dollar right now is pulling back. But by and large, uh, in a world whereby there is uh, uh, no so-called good currency to, be, uh, to put your money in, I think eventually the dollar will have to come rolling back at some point in time. So if this pullback result in the dollar index going back to 101.15 to 101.80, that to me is a buying opportunity. Unfortunately, I have already bought uh, near the low here as the market went down. And I was hoping yesterday that if the market gave me a chance to rebound, uh, to get out of my existing position, then I, I will do so and then reposition my long at a lower level. But that did not happen. So now I will have to basically bite the bullet and see whether I can buy some more near this range of prices. Okay. Now, in terms of major currencies other than the yen has benefited tremendously from the turmoil in the banking sector. Sterling seems to be doing pretty well. The high trade was 122.85, but the market since has pulled back to 181. Uh, 121.80 so far. So we can see that there's a bit of a pullback. To expect the sterling dollar to pull back all the way to 120, which is my ideal price to buy, may be a little bit unrealistic. So maybe we'll just have to watch. I have placed my order down the last. Nobody knows what kind of volatility we may see upon the FOMC rate decision. So I'm just placing my buy order there just in case the market actually have a chance to pull back all the way there. Okay. Over in euro versus the dollar, we can see that the euro has actually went up to 107.88 and it hits a pocket of prices which I believe to be uh, vulnerable. Uh, this range of prices is 107.75 to 108.35. This bracket of prices is to me is where I think 
the likelihood of selling interest returning is going to be pretty good. And actually, unfortunately, I'm really short and I, I intend to sell some more uh, into this breakout of prices if we get another kick up higher. Because so far, there's no sell signal that is telling me the market has already picked up. Maybe we can see another spike higher and that will give me another chance to anchor at a better price. Okay. Over in the Aussie versus the dollar, we can see the market is really not going anywhere. The market is basically consolidating. Uh, initially, I thought the market would go up to 0 0.6740 before coming down down to 0 0.6563 so but that did not happen immediately so the market is basically just uh, uh, consolidating not giving us any kind of clue as to where you want to go over in dollar versus the yen like i said earlier on the safe haven currency which is the japanese yen right now is the flavor of the month so that means the dollar versus the yen will have to see lower prices going forward yesterday we have a bit of a rebound in dollar yen from 130.54 all the way to this morning high of 132.70 so basically i do see that if the market can actually edge a little bit higher 134 or to 135 that would be to me a selling uh, uh, an area in which i would love to do some kind of selling but because i think the turmoil in the banking sector is not over by any means so there is a chance that the yen may strengthen further based on this uh, tension in the banking sector over in the dollar versus canadian we don't see much of activity very similar to what we saw in the uh Aussie versus the dollar so basically it's consolidating uh I have already shorted the dollars CAC but yesterday we saw the market pull back very deeply so now it's pulling back again hopefully it will like struggle all the way to 136 to allow me to exit my position but but by and large this position is already risk-free because I have boom by stop to break even so regardless of what happened I will not lose money on this trade although there is not going to be anything spectacular okay over in the uh uh, Bitcoin, we saw Bitcoin actually rally to 28,567. Okay, uh, that is on Monday. Okay, so yesterday there was no new high, there was an uh, earlier, uh, there was a late, late, uh, it, there was an early attempt this morning to actually go higher, but it's nowhere near the 28,567. So if this continues, there is a risk that the market may decide to take profit and the market may see a pullback. If that's the case, my ideal price to actually position long is somewhere between 23,000 to 24,000. So the market, if ever goes so deep, a, a, a correction, that will be a great place to actually anchor long. Okay. So we can see that Ethereum also have a bit of a pullback. The high also traded on Monday at eight. Uh, one thousand eight hundred forty-six dollars and fifty cents, and that market did not come back. And this morning we have a bit of a challenge, but uh, no, this was late yesterday morning, uh, late last night or early this morning. There was a, a late challenge. Uh, highest it traded was one thousand eight hundred and thirty-nine dollars and ninety cents. It did not quite make it, so there's a good chance it may actually pull back. Ideally, we want to see the price pull back to thousand five hundred and fifty to thousand six hundred and ten. So this area is actually my area of preferred buying if the market ever go that deep. Okay, so just be aware that the rally in cryptocurrency, in this, uh, in particular Bitcoin and Ethereum, is not caused by a uh, safe haven buying because cryptocurrency is anything but safe it is actually one of the most risky product out there so this rally in cryptocurrency cannot be related to safe haven buying uh, like, what, like what we saw in uh, the gold market or even the dollar versus the yen okay the yen okay so uh, for those who believe that uh, cryptocurrency is benefiting from the turmoil in the banking sector it is not true uh, the reason behind the rally in bitcoin and ethereum is largely due to the instability of the stable coin so right now a lot of institution has actually started to uh, to get out of their position in stable coin and park their money into the main coin itself which is bitcoin and ethereum for now let's see how uh, this thing pans out because this crisis in the banking sector is by no means over we have yet to see the eye of the storm yet okay so do be aware now this morning uh uh today uh the focus will be on the fomc which is going to happen at 2 a.m singapore time so if you're going to be staying awake to watch the uh how things unfold uh that will be the timing in the meantime take care and uh, be safe bye-bye